Welcome back to the Great Man Podcast. My name is Maxim, and today we're going to be talking about another great man, Louis L'Amour. Louis was born in 1908 in Jamestown, North Dakota, into a family of learners, a family of readers, and a family of very skilled people. Pretty much every day when Louis was a kid, he would always go to the library to pick up new books and to read more about a variety of different things, both fiction and nonfiction. And I think one of the things that shaped, helped shape Louis L'Amour was the fact that pretty much every night at the dinner table, his family would talk about a variety of different things, such as books, politics, poetry, and philosophy at every meal as well as boxing too, because that was very popular at the time. But Louis had a love for learning, and by the time he was 15, in 10th grade, he decided, you know, I'm not very financially stable at the moment, and I don't feel like I'm getting the education I need. So he leaves. He begins to work at sawmills, at a mine, and even travel as a hobo from destination to destination, where he wanted to work, by train. And the stories he would hear while traveling as a hobo to these different destinations so that he could work were incredible. In fact, he details a lot of these stories within his book, Education of a Wandering Man. And one of the stories he talks about is how, as he was traveling as a hobo, he met a man about in his 80s who was taken by the Apache tribe when he was about seven years old. And the man talked about how when he was about eight or nine years old, he went on an Apache war party to capture some ammunition that was in a caravan and how hundreds of the Apache died trying to attack the caravan and he was all watching it from a cliff. But it's not just the stories that Louis was told. It was what he did with those stories, especially later on in his life. While he was a hobo, he would try to talk to as many people as he could, and try to pick up as many books as he could while he was traveling. And this was important not just for the fact that he wanted to enter be entertained by these books and these stories, but because he actually wanted to learn. And I think that's one of the traits of a great man, is wanting to learn and really understand certain subjects. And not just subjects that you're very interested in, but subjects you don't know anything about. That was one thing about Louis, is that it didn't matter what he was learning about, he still wanted to learn something new. I think another trait about great men, which Louis represents perfectly throughout his life, is that he wanted different experiences. He wanted to work hard, but he also wanted to experience different things. For example, by the time he would have been graduated at school, he was in Singapore. By the time he was 18 years old, he had already skinned cattle in Texas, baled hay in New Mexico, worked as a rustabout with a circus, boxed small-town exhibition fights, and won a few, hoboed across Texas on the Southern Pacific, shipped out to the West Indies as a seaman, and later to Liverpool. He'd planted fruit trees near Phoenix, worked as a caretaker of a mine, and spent three very rough months on the beach in San Pedro. Louis had a zest for life. He wanted to experience things fully, and while he was a hobo traveling across these trains, mostly legally, but sometimes illegally, he would always stop near places where people would mention, and he cared about the beauty of places and experiencing that beauty firsthand, even if that meant it would take him more time to get to his destination. Later in life, Louis would constantly try to travel, to experience new things, just as he did in his early life, to learn new things, but to also gather stories. Whenever he would go to a new town or city, he would always want to know why that was founded, when it was founded, and who it was founded by, and some stories that went along with the city or town. He wanted to know what the land looked like, the kind of people that lived there, so he could formulate his stories correctly, and then produce one of the hundreds of stories that he made during his life. Louis eventually wrote 100 novels, over 250 short stories, and sold more than 320 million copies of his work. And throughout the course of human history, there's only about 20 other writers who have been as successful in his writing as he was. And a lot of his books were adapted to TV and film. He continued to travel and experience new things even after he was married, but one day he got pneumonia. It went away, but then later it came back a second time, and he went to the doctor, and as he was getting checked for pneumonia, the doctor saw that he had some cancer cells developing in his body, but they could not do a surgery on it. So even as Louis was dying, laying in his bed, he continued to write. 
And I don't know if he published any books during that time, or if he finished any books during the time he was dying, but he eventually died in the 1980s from cancer. So despite the many awards he got during his life, the many achievements, he was truly a great man for his curiosity of learning, curiosity of life, zest for life, and just doing what he thought was best to do. So even though he was 16 years old, traveling technically illegally as a hobo to these different destinations to work, he said he was 22, or he was passing his 22, and even though that's lying, he still wanted to experience adventure, which I think is okay for young men to do, to lie, at least in that context, for that reason. Louis L'Amour was a truly impressive man that I think if you read his books, you can learn a lot from. And I think that this is what many young men want to do. They want to do the things that Louis L'Amour did at the age he did them at. But I think there's a lot of things in the way of that. But despite that, there are many things that young men can do that were like Louis L'Amour. Now, of course, individuals have their own idea of the type of adventures that they want to have, the type of things they want to do, and the type of morals that they had. Those are other things that Louis realized that as he was growing up, he saw even veterans from the Civil War and Indian Wars, and he realized that those men had a lot of morals. And they were strong morals that they used in everyday life, constantly, all the time. And they had dignity as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Louis L'Amour is a truly, truly impressive man. And I think if you want to read any, his, any of his books, you should read the series The Sackets. It's a great story of a family going from the very first generation with the first book down many, many generations. I think it's like 17 books. So it's a great read. You guys should check it out. And I think young men should definitely look into Louis L'Amour to see exactly what we can do if we really put our mind to things. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys next time.